You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi everyone, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is an episode about tools to free your mind. I am a really big fan of productivity tools. I love finding ways of being more productive, getting more things done, and most importantly, freeing my mind to think as effectively as possible. Our minds are the most precious asset that we have in many ways, and one of the fundamental things that makes us human is that we have the ability to extend the power of our mind using tools. So I think there's an enormous power in using tools to free your mind and extend what your mind is capable of doing. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about all the tools that I have found really helpful, and I hope you will find helpful too. Now, I do want to say that um, tools are nothing without habits. Uh, If you don't have the repetitive behaviors, the good habits that you need in order to make these tools effective, then they will be completely useless and they won't actually do anything for you. They won't help you free up your mind and they won't extend your productivity. But if you develop the habits in combination with these tools, that combination is enormously powerful. It's tools in combination with good habits that are behind all of the great achievements that humans are capable of in art and science and everything else. It's all tool-based. So what I'll do is I'll run through uh, all the tools that I've found very helpful and I'll mention the habits that are associated with them, but I also really encourage you to read up on that and find out more about them. Okay, so the first tool I want to talk about is a concentration timer. What I mean by that is simply something to help you focus and concentrate. So the reason this is useful is that your, your mind is not free if you're distracted all the time. There are so many distractions around us. Whenever you want to focus and concentrate, you can distract yourself internally, thinking of other things, going and checking Facebook, your mind wandering off and so forth. And you can have external uh, distractions too, people interrupting you, phone calls and so forth. So it's hard to concentrate, but it's also really important when you do concentrate to give your brain breaks. The brain is a physical organ it needs rest as well i've found that a concentration timer is a really useful tool to help with this and what i mean what that is is simply a stopwatch with an alarm the best place to read about techniques for using this tool is to look up the pomodoro technique and that really explains very simply how you can set a timer even something as simple as a kitchen timer that's where the word pomodoro comes from it's an italian tomato shaped kitchen timer you just wind it up to time for 25 minutes and then you focus on a specific task for 25 minutes and at the end of that 25 minutes you give yourself a break of five minutes and then you do another focus and after four of these you take a longer break now the habit that goes with the concentration timer is to stop uh, multitasking and focus on one thing at a time when you're doing concentrated work and to manage your interruptions so if you think of something else you make a note of it and uh, that so that you can come back to it later or if somebody interrupts you you negotiate to call them back later or, or deal with an issue later on you make a note of these things um, and you continue with your focused work that's the habit that the tool is used for you can find out more about this uh, online and i'll put links in the show notes I started using this recently and I have found it a really helpful tool to help me to free myself from distraction and do concentrated work. Tool number two is a journal. I've included this as a tool because you're only really free to think if you can get ideas out of your head. Writing is an amazing capability for humans. It's another thing that that makes us human is our ability to get ideas out of our head and write them down. And writing really helps you to clear your mind and to improve your thinking because by getting the ideas outside your head on paper or in a computer, it really enables you to look at your ideas objectively and think much more effectively about 
your ideas, whatever you're thinking about. A journal can simply be uh, pen and paper. You can get journaling apps. Um, I recommend that you get a lockable journal. This is an idea that came from Daniel Mackler, a psychologist, and he recommends having a journal that is completely private so that you can really free yourself to express all your ideas fully for yourself. And I personally use a journaling app. Uh, I use Mac Journal on the Mac, but there are many out there and there are also online journals and so forth. The habit that goes along with journaling is to journal regularly. And there's a real value uh, that comes from that. Okay, tool number three is a ubiquitous capture tool. Now that is a bit of a mouthful. And what do I mean by that? Well, that is basically a mobile thought collecting tool. So you want your mind to have the freedom to make connections and come up with great ideas anywhere. But you also want the freedom to get on with your day so that if you do have a good idea, you don't have to remember it and hold it until you can actually do something with it. You can write it down and get on with what you're doing. There's a saying that you're only as good as the number of ideas that you throw away. So it's really important to capture all your ideas and all the thoughts that come to you and information that you think is could be important and have it stored in a safe place so that you can then come back to and deal with. So examples of this could simply be carrying a pen and paper around with you wherever you go. And I've done that in the past. Other examples that I've used are what's called a hipster PDA. You can look that up. And that's basically three by five inch index cards that you can carry uh, in a clip uh, with a pen. And you write down an idea on one of the index cards when it comes to you. And it's just easier then to use that specific index card later as a single idea that you can put somewhere else or store or file or do things with. Uh, so that's another one that you can use. These days, I simply use my smartphone. There are many apps uh, that you can get for jotting things down. I use an, uh, a little app called Drafts on the iPhone, uh, which launches very quickly and allows me to jot down notes. I also sometimes use the voice memo uh, on my phone when I want to, uh, for example, if I'm out skating, I don't really want to pull a pen out. I can use the voice memo and record a thought and then come back to that later. So there are lots of different uh, tools that you can use. The key habit here is to always have your mobile ubiquitous capture tool with you and also to write down thoughts when they come to you, to record the ideas or thoughts or information as you see it or as you think of it so that you have it for later. The next tool is what I call a stuff funnel. Now that might sound like a very strange thing, but let me explain what I mean. So stuff shows up in life all the time. Information comes into your life. You get letters or emails or things you download from the internet or people tell you things. You go out and bring back some bit of paper with some information on it. So there's all this stuff that shows up in life and that could really clog up your mind. It can also clog up your apartment as well. If you leave stuff all over the place, that actually clogs your mind because your mind knows that there's things that need to be dealt with at some point. So a stuff funnel is a system that you have for gathering all that stuff together uh, in one place and processing that stuff, knowing what you're going to do with it. Now, what this might look like is simply things like an inbox where you put anything that you bring home in your wallet or your purse. And it could be your digital inbox in your task management app. or And it can include things like your downloads folder and your email inbox. But the point is to think of all of these different inboxes as a funnel. They all are connected and you need to be able to take all of the stuff that accumulates them and process it down into one place. For me, that's my task management application. And that one place, you will then process that stuff and decide what to do with it, whether you're going to throw it away or keep it or, or make a task out of it and so forth. The habit that you need to use this tool is to always put stuff 
in one of the places that is part of your funnel, so in your inbox if it's a physical item, or in your digital inbox if it's a digital item and so forth, and then to clear your inboxes to process all the stuff that comes in to your stuff funnel. So I hope that makes sense. Um, this comes from GTD, uh, the Getting Things Done by David Allen, and it's a very, very powerful tool to help you clear your mind, free your mind, and think better. The next tool that I want to talk about is a task management application. This is a really, really powerful type of tool. It's basically a tool for helping you organize all the things that you have to do. And organize not just the actions, but the projects that those actions are associated with and the desired outcomes and the areas of responsibility in your life that those projects are connected to. This can be as simple as a paper system where you simply write down your to-do lists on bits of paper and you also have associated projects with each list and so forth. Or you can get a dedicated application. I personally use Things on the Mac, which is a fairly simple task management application. A lot of people use OmniFocus, which is another one. And many people actually just use Evernote as their task management system. They effectively organize notes to represent their projects and tasks. Whatever you use, the habit that goes together with this tool is organizing all your thoughts into projects and tasks and next actions. Again, this is coming from GTD. It's an incredibly powerful uh, tool to help you think and free your mind of all the little to-do items that uh, can clog up your thinking. Okay, the next tool that I'm going to talk about is a reference material store. So this is a place for you to put all of the information that you're not using, but you might need at some point in the future. You might want to refer to. And this is very helpful because you have to manage this information. And if you have a clear way of managing the information, then you can get it out of your head and think more freely and not have it sort of in the back of your mind. The funny thing is you need to know that you can get something if you want to in order to forget about it. So it needs to be in a place where you know you can get access to it and then it's not on your mind anymore. Now, there's lots of different examples of this. I started off using a filing cabinet with hanging files with all the information that I needed in there. And then I moved uh, more recently to a paperless system. So I use Evernote and I also use uh, encrypted cloud storage drives. You can put your information anywhere, but the point is for you to have a trusted place where you know that you're going to be able to find it again. The habit that goes along with having a reference material store is putting all your information in that place. So knowing that if you need to find something, you know exactly where to go to find it. There are other good habits that you can have, like the way that you organize the system and naming convention and this kind of thing. But that's the basic idea, is having a place where you can store stuff for future reference and forget about it. The next tool is a mind mapping tool. This is a really powerful tool uh, to help you mind map. Now, mind mapping is something that I think was invented by a guy called Tony Buzan. And you can look it up. I'll also put some uh, links in the show notes. Essentially, it's a way of making intuitive connections between things that you're thinking about by drawing little um, circle and stick diagrams, the sort of like spider web diagrams linking bubbles of thought together. And it's really helpful because it allows you to make those intuitive connections, which you might not make if you're just journaling away or writing stuff down or thinking very procedurally, you know, first thing to the next thing to the next thing. So it really is a, a great tool to help be con to help you be conscious of all the amazing intuitive connections that your mind is totally capable of doing and is doing all the time. We just don't necessarily connect to that uh, amazing insight. And to do so consciously is incredibly helpful. The simplest example of a mind mapping tool is just a pen and paper. You, t you really don't need anything more than that. You can just draw mind maps yourself and go for it. And I've done many um, mind maps on pen and paper, and it's really, really useful because it's very fast. 
I do also like using mind mapping apps, and I happen to use one on the iPad called iThoughts HD, but there are hundreds out there, and there are loads of free ones as well. And the advantage of a mind mapping app is that it can be a lot easier to rearrange uh, thoughts in a mind map and, and expand thoughts and so forth. So that's also a very helpful thing to do. And the habit associated with this is simply to allow yourself to make those connections and do mind mapping. And it, it took me a while to get into it, um, but it is well worth the effort because it's a really powerful tool to free your mind with. The last tool that I want to talk about is what I call a media consumption cue. Now, this is really a system and tool for yourself to read something later or watch something later or listen to something later or even buy something later. The reason this is useful is if you're browsing the internet, you see something interesting, someone sends you a link and it looks like it could be a good read or a good video that you might like to watch. What do you do? Do you just stop and watch it right now? If you do, before you know it, you've lost a couple of hours each morning just reading random stuff that you saw on Facebook. However, it's also, it is nice to be able to read interesting stuff. So if you have a system in place where you can read, watch, or listen later, that enables you to catch those useful and interesting things, but not interrupt the flow of your day stopping and reading them or watching them right now. There are many examples of this. Um, I have to use a multiple apps because there isn't really one tool that will do all of the capture that I want to, but examples are things like Instapaper, which allows you to store web pages to read later offline. On YouTube, you can use the watch later feature to uh, store up a queue of YouTube videos that you might like to watch. I use a an app on the iPad called Watch Later, which works with both YouTube and Vimeo. And then there's things like on Amazon, you can have wish lists for books that you might like to read later or buy later. And you can think of many other ways of doing this, you know, podcast catchers for things that you might like to listen to later. Whatever this, the particular app that you use, the idea is to have a system to queue up your media for consumption and then to make conscious choices about what to watch or read or listen to. So that's really the habit associated with this, is to make a conscious choice. Do I want to watch this now? Do I want to read this now? And you know, if you have it all in a queue, you can also get a better overview of all the articles that you've collected this week that you might like to read. You can either just bash through them or read, read them all when you have some spare time, or you can also you know, save things to read later and then decide, you know what, it's actually not that important that I read this and just delete it. And so you can be a bit more discerning about your media consumption as well, which is also very helpful. So those are the tools. And I realize that I've rushed through them very quickly. But my aim here is really just to give you an overview um, so that you can think about how you might start adopting some of these tools and habits. And as I said, the, the tools are only useful if they're used in combination with the best practice habits that go with them. I wanted to finish by giving you some further resources that I think you might find useful. I have found it very helpful to read up on productivity systems and to find out what other people suggest about how to free your mind and think more effectively. And as I've talked about before, the most helpful books that I've found are the ones by David Allen. The main one that he's written is Getting Things Done, um, he's also written a book called Making It All Work and a couple of others. I highly recommend that you uh, look at those. I'll put them in the notes. There's also, uh, there is a free book online about the Pomodoro technique, and I'll put that in the show notes as well. Another thing that I've found really helpful is talking to friends and other productivity enthusiasts about their systems and comparing notes and really bouncing ideas with others about ways of thinking more effectively, freeing up your mind, being more productive. And I really, really recommend that. It's very helpful hearing about other people's experiences. There's a podcast that I enjoy a lot, which is called the Getting Things Done Virtual Study Group, or the GTD VSG. On that 
podcast, you hear a lot of people talking about their systems and the problems they've encountered and how they've overcome them. And I've found that very helpful just to inspire my own thinking about my systems. But it's also really helpful to talk to your friends. Um, if you have friends who are interested in productivity as well, you know, compare your experiences with them. That I've found that also very inspiring. And I'd also love to hear from you if you have other tools that you have found are very helpful to free your mind please tell me about them i'm really interested to hear about your experiences with these tools too so i hope that's helpful thank you so much for listening thank you for listening to the voluntary life if you have feedback about the show please email jake at the if you enjoyed this program please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on the